What was your childhood like? My childhood was daycare, even in the summer. Mm. It's these uh, childless women, but they're like gamifying it to see how radical they can make toddlers. And if you do this wrong, this is gonna happen to you. They wanna tell you to jump and they want you to ask how high. Why do kids go nuts? It's not because they're bad kids. There's nothing in the world that could ever frighten me besides having children that go to public school. The, the type of thinking that people are being prepared to do, there's, no, there's gonna be no demand for it in 20 years either way. Uh, you have already lost bodily autonomy, but imagine what's gonna happen in five more years. There's even no guarantee, even if you, you see it through. They can knock on your door with freaking Uzis and say, you're coming with us. You are treating your kids like kids, but then you expect them to act like adults. Makes you hate life just as it's designed. <laughs> anyway, whatever. It was meant to be. The sadness in these messages, because some kids really took it to heart, all is lost because, uh, Wife. People who have that mindset tend to sway more often than most to like doing music and shit. You're like, I downloaded like a new drum kit today. Where's my check? <laughs> it sucked losing TV show. But if I had that mindset of being hardcore attached to outcomes, if I had held on to like the promise of being a gifted child, like that's absolute poison. If I had held on to that and like been, in, been as entitled as I was when I was 22, I would be, like, downloading torrents of TV shows right now and organizing them. I'd be one of those dudes. When I drive around, I drive by this, um, there's a preschool by the, uh, place I get coffee, and I see them, I see them walking the kids with masks on. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's, it's really hard to not start screaming at the person leading the, the kids. And the kids, they look like zombified. They're not. Yeah, they're not happy to have their. Kids come. No. There's some pretty, pretty dark shit. I mean, realistically, the most common dark thing that happens is these. It's these uh, these women, childless women, who um, use the kids as like a uh, their own little like political um, indoctrination camp. Like they they they're they're using they're the, they're like gamifying it to see how how radical they can make uh, <clears throat> toddlers. I mean, that's a common thing. I know somebody. Somebody like this, this girl I used to date, she's a, um, a teacher in some shithole city, so she'll text me bragging about how uh, she had her, her kids, um, you know, have a moment of silence for George Floyd or whatever the f stupid, stupid thing uh, she did that day. And of course, she herself is a child, childless, uh, miserable person. You know, they're going to torture all the children that go to school now. They're going to be living in incredible fear, incredible confusion, no chance of teaching. There's going to be plastic dividers. They're going to be in little prison cubicles. They're going to be just looking at a screen. T teachers aren't going to be there. It's going to be such a joke. All the while, you're paying for it. You're paying for it. Torture children. No big deal. Yeah, sure. All you have to do is wait. And the next generation is, is more abused. And next thing you know, everywhere you turn, they're in charge. Now you see how easy it is? How did yeah, you get you. through art school without going crazy? I'm, I think that's when I started to think seriously about the distribution of resources and uh, about um, the, the like puerile notion that every most people have when they're like 12 years old, think, when they start to think about government and how things should be distributed and seeing the inefficiency and the, um, the bureaucracy and what a, what a scam, what a scam college is. That's, um, that was yeah. a big formative thing for me was like living, living through the scam and, and watching my dad blow, uh, $250,000 on stuff you could learn on YouTube, basically. Wow. Uh, I did blow quite a bit though, uh, uh, on grad school and in the middle of grad school, I realized that I'm paying this D bag liberal guy to tell me that I can get a piece of paper and that he who hates me will allow me to go and talk about the things that I actually mm -hmm. knew better than that guy. You know what I mean? It's like, this is totally a scam and brainwashing. It's way. such an insane waste of money because that's that amount of money, you know, you can use that to start not, not just one business. I mean, it depends on what kind of business you're trying to start, but that's like that's startup capital for effing 10 businesses, you know, and that's yeah. uh, across the, uh, 
across the entire country, all those people. I mean, if you want to help, if you're one of these people that wants to, uh, if you want to do good, if you want to be charitable, look at the, look at the, uh, the waste of, uh, the waste of money that's happening in, in colleges and think about what that, what that money could do. I mean, you know, Dwight Eisenhower has that, uh, it, when he was, when he was no, railing a- against the, the military industrial complex and talking about how, uh, <clears throat> you know, one B-52 bomber is like the cost of a hospital, that kind of thing. Right. It's just like, um, there's so many people who, uh, are concerned with, with helping, helping society, but they're unwilling to like, um, look at, uh, look for inefficiency in these hallowed institutions. So I worked in universities for a while. Okay. They're very evil systems. Okay. It's not just that they want you to do this and that and the other, but they like your subservience is something they are constantly extracting more from, you know, NGOs, universities, big corporations, they're all like, all like giant cults and they're constantly doing absurd things and making you do absurd things. Um, to, to kind of make sure that you are loyal to them, right? That's what a lot of this kind of HR stuff is. Like in general, they want you, they want to tell you to jump and they want you to ask how high, okay? Now, when you're in that system, it is very convenient, okay? If you're getting paid, uh, you know, $100,000 a year to do some nominal work, or, oh, maybe some company paid, you know, even more than that, to, you know, to you're working somewhere in China or somewhere in Singapore. I don't know. Like you, you got this like nice sounding job with all these benefits. The thing about it is that they are only going to ask more from you. They get off by it in a weird way. Yeah. That's why I don't think we should, you know, even participate in the school system. Like we should just pretend it doesn't exist. And we should, yeah. we should, I think to set up the next generation properly, we should, um, teach them skills that they could learn, especially skill like real skills that you could apply to if if everything came crashing down because it looks like that's what's going to happen. The track that people are put on and are, and are being prepared for starting right now is a track that is absolutely not going to be there in 20 years. Right. Whether whether or not your hunch plays out and we go into apocalypse mode or whether my hunch plays out and we go into uh, machine learning um, THX uh, 1138 uh, right me- everyone medicated and, and um, uh, fat and happy uh, that's worse no, yeah it's that's that's worse and um, but in 20 years none of the things that people think you're gonna be doing are gonna are gonna be there in 20 years you're either gonna be chopping down trees to build your shelter or you're gonna be um, earning rewards points from watching streamers or something while a, while a machine does the job that you used to do. It's preposterous to um, <clears throat> the job, the, the type of thinking that people are being prepared to do is uh, it's not, it's not going to be, there's no, there's going to be no demand for it in 20 years either way. The mindset being pushed on the masses is still consistent with the mindset that boomers grew up with. So they're, they're under the impression yeah. that the system is the same as it was when they were young growing up. Anyone ever learn how to balance their, their bank, their, their bank books? Anyone learn how to, to juggle or deal with, uh, with debt properly? Anyone ever learn how to, you know, do any gardening, any, any fishing, any freaking tool stuff, anything like that? No, just horse, 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 horse from a bunch of losers. Because a child is in school for six, seven hours straight, doesn't mean they're getting six, seven hours of, of, uh, quality learning. They're getting, you know, 45 minutes of quality learning every day out of six hours. It's absolute. Kids can do 20 minutes of focus per day. Ball learners, hey. Hey, that's like me. You should have seen me. I'm going to wake up too early in the morning. I'm going to go to school, listen to bull all goddamn day, and I'm going to go home and do bull homework? Dude, you're going to be in my bedroom after six, seven hours of goddamn school? I got to think about your ass when I'm sitting at the table or the school doing bull homework? Go to hell. It's very common for kids or teenagers, as soon as they're given the slightest bit of freedom, to start going nuts. Kid goes off to college. Kid gets wasted, kid drops out of school, kid gets pregnant, kid does drugs, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of parents wonder what they did wrong. A lot of parents wonder why this happened. A lot of them think it's because they just didn't get enough discipline while they were at home. Adults are treated with respect. Even when we don't get along, there's still some fundamental basic level of respect that we give one another. Whereas children, 
are constantly treated and assume, we always assume the worst of them. They're not prepared for the real world. They're not prepared to be treated like human beings because they've been being treated like pieces of crap their entire life. And again, we put this out of our head because we don't need it in our head once we're 17, 19, 20, 25, 45, 50. We're not being treated like crap anymore, so we just kind of forget about it. I still remember what it was like to be five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, and to sit in a classroom with miserable people who would treat you like you were a piece of If you do this, you're going to get this, ha- this is going to happen to you. And if you do this wrong, this is going to happen to you. And I don't want you to think that you'll be able to get this by me because you won't. They start off assuming the worst. Can't I have an hour to myself? You're, you're told. You get good grades, you get smart, you, you know, it's, you, it's a dis- discipline. How are you supposed to grow as a human being? You are treating your kids like kids, but then you expect them to act like adults. Does that make any sense? Why do kids go nuts when they have a chance to leave and go off to college? Or why do they go nuts when they just get to go out into the world and see how things are? It's not because they're bad kids. It's not because of all the drugs and the violence and the sex and the tattoos. And it really is ridiculous. And it really is the result of trapping children in this Stockholm Syndrome type environment. Again, the only way that you're going to gain respect for this person is if you fall victim to Stockholm Syndrome. Like, what do you expect out of people when you trap them in a hot, humid room for nine hours a day, somewhere where they don't want to be, and expect them to do anything while you're consistently bitching at them and belittling them and berating them and treating them like children? Do you expect dignified adult behavior? Do you expect when they are actually given freedom that they're not going to be unprepared for it because they never experienced it as a child? You're insane. Makes you hate life just as it's designed. (laughs) Anyway, whatever. There have been many times in my life where I've basically left everything (laughs) because, oh, well, I'm not, uh, you know, me being a professor, that is a life of like slavery, okay? Especially nowadays, it's really like humiliating slavery. It's actually, I got a bunch of hilarious stories about that, but that's for another video. You already know what's right to do. I don't know if you want me to tell you. I think that's stupid. Like, I think the concept of, you know, self-help is self-refuting because it's mostly not people self-helping. Most of the time, it's just people who are cowardly and don't want to follow their principles. Like, they don't want to do what they know is right. Most people either don't have the resources or don't or lack the wherewithal to even know that it's a problem or to see it through. Most people aren't financially capable of moving out of the city next to where they work out into the woods. 99.9% of the people are, it's impossible for them to do it. There's nothing in the world that could ever frighten me besides having children that go to public school. I turned out okay, even though I was bombarded with things, just memorizing meaningless trash for nothing, memorizing things that aren't even real. College, yes, because you get lectures, then you have to produce work. That's different. High school, well, I mean, could be taking classes that aren't freaking wheelchair classes, I guess. You can, if you want to, you can get extra things out of an education, even in the high school times. But you know what? Give me a, you know what I'm saying? Give me, like, can't I have an hour to myself? It's not like when I was a child. It's way different. It's way more, <laughs> it's way more licentious these days. It's more blunted now. <laughs> I mean, we're, there's a solution to it, but you just have to, you have to have the resources or be saving up or not be in debt enough to see that through. And, and there's even, there's even no guarantee, even if you, you see it through. They could, they could knock on your door with freaking Uzis and say, come with us. That actually is why, you know, risk, you know, the thing is it does require risk taking. That's why, um, when things bad happen in your life, uh, there are all these pressures on you. You should always view that as a good thing because it's encouraging you to make risks with your life. It's encouraging you to say, oh, well, maybe I'll do this because, you know, do something else because it's totally stupid. It's only going to get worse. Like the things they're going to demand, they're already requiring you to put something in your body, okay? Uh, You have already lost bodily autonomy. So it's just a question of how many other things in the future that we can't even foresee. But imagine what's going to happen in five more years or 10 more years. What are they going to require from you uh, what kind of hilarious concessions, uh, what kind of hilarious hoops do they want you to jump through? Like a freaking wagey dog. Is your parents watching Fox News or CNN? Is that is that really so unbearable that it's worth $1,200 a month? Guess what? Nepotism and coattail riding 
are your keys to success.